Welcome everybody to Wisdom Keys with myself, Brother Francis. Today is May 13th, 2021. It's uh, always an important time of the year for me. I won't go into that. If you have my uh, first book that I wrote, you'll see why. Anyway, it is Thursday, <laughs> another day in the week. Thank you for joining me uh, live as well as replay when you get a chance to see this. Wisdom Keys, topic for today, is meditation important? Before we do that, let me give you a few announcements. Hey, Rosemary Navarra, good to see you here. Um, first of all, uh, Resident Essentials has an awesome, awesome, awesome energy to it. Founded by Michelle Vidal, and she has us participating here, which I like doing uh, very much, sharing insight uh, with many of you that get a chance to watch this live. Good afternoon, Jeannie. And at least we have four days out of the week, out of the work week, where you can see four of us come on. I'm here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time with Wisdom Keys. Every Friday at 12 p.m., there's Swanda with Michelle Vidal. Every Monday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time with uh, Whispering Wisdom, I think it is. It's dealing with mediumship, the do's and the don'ts, and how that has come about, how to properly do it, and the things you should be thinking about. That's from our lovely sister in the UK, Audrey Wilson, every Monday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Every Tuesday at 12 p.m., our other sister, Donna Lindblom, is here, Donna of Dominion Tarot, I should say, and she's here every Tuesday at 12 p.m. with her beautiful subject matter, and she gives one card readings to anybody who wishes to have one. Also, uh, she starts off with an energy card of the day, and I believe she uh, signs off that way. And so you could get at least four out of five days a week some information pertaining to your own particular spiritual growth and metaphysical awareness. Well, today's topic is, is meditation important? Well, yes, it is. Meditation is very important to us, and it does a lot of things for us. Now, reason why I kind of say it that way, because when we're in and around uh, ourselves, whether we're in nature, outdoors, maybe you're sitting on the patio, sitting in your front step, your back step, uh, maybe you're out at a park, and maybe you like to camp. You know, I'm not a camper. <laughs> I'm not big on hiking either. So, but you're out somewhere, we can have a sense of peace and quiet. Meditation is awesome to use. I'm from the East Coast, so I didn't have too much peace and quiet all the time. So most of my training, when getting involved with some level of meditation, was sitting on a crowded subway train, crowded buses, crowded city parks where everybody is chit-chatting away. A lot of activity going on, people on roller boards, people playing, uh, what is it, three three cup Marley, three five card Marley, all that stuff going on, magic tricks. But just being where there was so much activity, the challenge was, can I find peace in the midst of that? Meditation is the act of finding your center of being. Being what? Being at a state of peace with yourself. Now, one of the most difficult things that does happen in meditation or of people who are striving to learn how to meditate for themselves 
It's very difficult to sit still. I'll say that again. It's very difficult to sit still. You're not being fidgety. You don't have a scratchy throat, uh, sinus congestion, blowing your nose, <laughs> which, you know, you got to do, right? Where you're not watching everything that's going on around yourself, outside of yourself. Meditation is has nothing to do with thinking. When I first got involved with meditation back in the 1970s when I was a freshman in college, and uh, people often used to say, uh, hi there, Elizabeth. People often used to say, meditation is thinking. Nah, I found out the long way that it's not. Meditation is about getting inside yourself and establishing first peace and serenity, tranquility, being quieting the mind, letting the mind slow down from all the constant chatter, all the thoughts that are going on. Meditation has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with any thinking process. But you know what? When it comes to be able to sit quietly or striving to do that, you're really sitting with yourself. Some people can't do that. Some people have to find something to do. So some people are doing meditation, but they're listening to a TV program or they're seated near a window where there's a lot of outside activity because they don't want to like focus on themselves. In meditation, you have to get to some kind of point where you start focusing on you. So meditation can be difficult sitting by yourself. Now, it's great when you can sit with other people and your energy gets built up. You play the energy off of each other. And that's what's happening. And so you're building up, building up. But try to do this by yourself. Many people find it very difficult to sit quietly by themselves with nothing on, absolutely. Now, when I started out on my own, I used meditation music because that was the level of the training that I had. My late mother was my own spiritual teacher, but she wasn't teaching me meditation. I was in uh, college, freshman in college, 1970, trying to learn how to meditate. And I was with all these different people uh, who were older uh, students than I was. And they were talking about Zen Buddhism and Confucianism and, you know, going into India and studying that way. But I realized later, long after I got out of college, that none of them learned it either. Um, they had learned incorrectly to some extent. But there's nothing wrong with using music or visuals. Um, in uh, Sanskrit, called a yantra, Y-A-N-T-R-A, -A, where you get the geometrical shape in front of you and you gaze upon it and you do your breathing with it and eventually you find yourself inside of it and you become what it means on some level. So there's different levels and different ways to meditate. But if meditation is about finding your center of being, it is also finding your true alignment with the presence of the divine I am inside of you. To remember that you're always connected to the more infinite side of yourself, which is in tune with the I am presence and each one of us is an expression of that divine presence. That's the highest thing that you want to attain is that you could recognize that in yourself, but not only in yourself eventually through your meditation, but to see it around you. See it in your dog, see it in your cat, <laughs> see it in your parakeet. <laughs> See it in a stray dog or a stray cat. See it in a horse. Go to the zoo and watch the I am presence live. And then imagine them without any gates or fences being themselves. Not where they're being gawked at, but seeing themselves in their presence of the divine. You don't always have to go into the mountains. 
to find the wise man or the wise woman when that wise man or wise woman is deep inside of you. So meditation is the act of finding your center of being who you are. Now there's a lot of breathing techniques. Some of the strongest breathing techniques we're inhaling through the nose about four or five times, maybe eight times, holding the breath for eight and releasing it for eight. Well, if you have weak lungs, that may not work for you. Try the most natural way, just breathe. Breathe in through the nose and let it out through the mouth. So there's many ways, but before we get into breathing, and postural mechanics, as I call it. Let's find out some other ways in which meditation can help you. If you are a person who suffers from blood pressure issues, meditation can help you. If you are someone who suffers from anxiety and stress, meditation can help you. If you are a person who cannot stay focused for two, three minutes at a time or longer, meditation is for you. If you're someone who is striving to stay really focused and really centered when you've got a lot of busyness going on around you, meditation is for you. So <laughs> there's just a few ways, but I can certainly tell you, if you connect well with your higher self by a silent meditation over the years of silent meditation, and I have, many other people have, and, and there are times when it comes and goes and comes and goes because our attention is not there, our breathing may not be there, our awareness may not be there, and our remembrance may not be there. When I mean be there, be present. See, meditation, through meditation, you learn how to stay present. So one of the things you, you learn about meditation is you learn how to sit quietly and you not get focused on what happened before you sat down for meditation and what you're about to do when meditation is over. So you learn how to carve out a moment, a time for yourself, a moment where you're working on your breathing, you're working on your posture. So you want to sit up straight, but you don't have to sit up, you know, with your back, try to stretch out your spine. You don't have to do that. Your shoulders will naturally fall down and roll back. Your head will naturally be seated over the top of your shoulders as it should be for yourself. But if you're one who can meditate, some people say, I can't sit. I'd rather run. Well, guess what? Jogging is like meditation for some people. Because you got to move the body. But you get into the rhythm of moving the body, stretching the body, warming the body up with the blood, then getting into running or jogging. And you do that consistently becomes a form of meditation. I was in a Zen Buddhist monk uh, monastery way back in the early 1990s uh, for a weekend retreat with some other people. And I was there for guided meditation, uh, leading that one night. And uh, we got up the next day, the Sunday, because during at the monastery, the weekend that we happened to go to was the weekend that none of the monks were talking. They were practicing silence. So they would only speak to each other if they really had to but they would just write out the message to each other. They sat in silence. They ate breakfast together in silence. They had lunch together in silence. They had dinner together in silence. But the next day when it was time for us to go, we had a chance to talk to many of them. Meditation is really important. So at that monastery that weekend, we had to be in a moment of silence or if we talked to each other, since we were there for a retreat, we had to whisper. 
not make any noise. To be able to sit in meditation, to stand. And they have a way uh, in the morning, they walk a brisk walk inside the meditation hall. The meditation hall could hold up to 100 people at a time, 200 people, big hall. And they would hit like a little bell and you'd walk faster and faster according to the rhythm of the bell being rung in the person's hand. You might lap that place like in uh, three, four times, really, really fast, but it opens you up so that you can breathe, body can breathe. Meditation, it's not thinking, that's contemplation. Meditation is letting go of all your thoughts. All the thoughts that you have like a ping pong ball going back and forth in your mind from the ones that are decisive to the ones that are indecisive, your thoughts. Sometimes your feelings too. So good time to meditate when you don't feel like doing it. It's easy to get into a state of meditation for yourself when everything is going right in the world for you. But try going into meditation when you're upset about something or about someone or an incident. That's like a big hurdle. Because when, you, when you're in that state of mind, when you're upset or angry or sad or depressed, depression is nothing more than anger turned in. So you're holding on to it, you're smoking. Meditation can help you release layer by layer. Just like when you peel an onion, you get that outer edge off and you get that other area and you get that, which is the real thin skin off. And, what happens? You start tearing up, right? Meditation can get you to that point where you release old thoughts, old hurts and pains, old wounds. And you have to work with them. We all do. Meditation is so important. But let me get back to this other thing people talk about. Because it depends on the person, really. I found out in my my studies, uh, I've been a student of meditation since 1971. So I was exposed to meditation in uh, martial art classes in college. I had a fellow student, freshman as myself. He was a purple belt. He's now a doctor, <laughs> a retired doctor. But uh, he was a Taekwondo student. And he talked about meditation. Michael Krasnoff, that was his name. Good guy, real nice guy. He taught meditation in the beginning, or what he knew about it. Then when I met Tai Chi practitioners in college, they talked about it. But I really didn't get into it until right after college, in the summer of 1974. Then, then, hey, Cynthia, my sister. Then I began to understand what meditation was. I was in Tai Chi classes where we couldn't talk. We just had to move across the floor quietly. But we had to breathe. And we had to learn how to breathe in the midst of activity. Push hands. Press forward. Rising up. Rising down. Stork stands on one leg. All these different postures. But we had to learn how to be quiet. How to quiet the mind. And pay attention to our breathing. Do you know that they are like your meditation practices boil down to two types? Guided meditation, which is interactive. You can do that by watching something on a YouTube channel that uh, gives off all those different hertz cycles and beautiful colors and meditate on that. You hear the sound or no sound, but you can see the image. Or someone can guide you through it. I've guided thousands of people through 3,000s of meditations. Cynthia can tell you. <laughs> when I lived in Jersey, did it every Friday. Guided meditations. 
sometimes the guided meditations are very helpful. And I'll say most of the time, I'll say 100% of the time they are because it allows you to activate this, the thinking, and get the thinking going to the point that you get beyond the thinking. And you get catapulted into images that are buried in your subconscious mind. All kinds of images. So, so guided meditation can be helpful. We have witnessed numerous times that we've seen thousands of trees, pine trees, evergreen, junipers, thousands of what? Insects and things. You could populate your meditation, your guided journey with that. Then there's the non-interactive meditation. That's where there's no music playing, just you and your breath. No one guiding you through imagery, just you and your breath. Many years, I used to do the guided meditation, but sometimes people didn't see anything. Those were things I had to learn. Some, some people don't see anything in their mind. They just see a black space, which is nothing wrong with that. That's the start of the the power within yourself when you just get a blank screen. Because when you're in meditation, all those thoughts dancing through your mind, that's what you want anyway, a blank screen so you don't see anything. And then what happens after that is what? What happens after that is that you happen to see yourself in your own meditation. You happen to see your thoughts bounce around. When you see your own thoughts bounce around, swirl around, colors, everything gets quiet. Then you're in that zone where you're deep breathing. In fact, while I'm talking, all of you can do it now. You can place the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth, behind your two front teeth. That point coincides with the point right beneath your nose going into the upper part of your lip, right here, it's on the inside. When you do that, that comes from the science of Qigong and Tai Chi. When you do that, that sets up the central energy corridor that's actually inside your spine, going up and down, inside the spinal cord. And the outer flow, as Montauk Chia would say, the uh, micro and the macro orbit. So the macro orbit is this chi coming up your back outside and flowing down the center and resting in the lower Dantian or second chakra. And then you keep pulling it up your back and coming down the front, building up the storehouse of energy. That's the they like the macro from the outside. The, the micro is on top of the spine, in the spine, going up and down. You're breathing. But many of you could do that now. Just breathe. Place that tongue there. Inhale. And you don't have to hold the breath at the top. And then just exhale. Don't have to push it and hold it out. Just inhale. And just do that. That alone will establish inside of you calmness just through the rhythm of your breathing and the rhythm of your breath unites with the heartbeat and when those two come together you experience something like euphoria or bliss nirvana samadhi those kind of things meditation helps you become calm but now there's some deeper sides of meditation. One of the things, it helps you to align to your higher self through the moment of silence. Meditation helps you to align to your higher self. That's the divine I am presence reflected in you, the most infinite part of yourself reflected in you out into the world. And you're here, layer by layer, 
on the inside. Now the key is hold that presence. Keep yourself attuned to that presence. Just keep playing with it, having fun with it, being joyful with it, relax into it. Mm. Just to give you a demonstration, a living witness you shall be to yourself. Start to inhale right now. Don't hold a breath at the top and just exhale. Place your awareness in the center of your chest, center of the sternum. On the other side is your heart, your physical heart. And stay there with your awareness. And let all of the remembrances rise out of your subconscious, out of your body, out of the cells of your body. Just let everything be released. Don't entertain, don't analyze, don't do any of that. Just relax. Now, here's a treat, a homework assignment, if you must, for yourself. As you practice this breathing in this manner, your job is to take a step back into yourself. Just like you could physically stand and take a half step back into the space behind you. Get that feeling just like that within you from the center of your heart. Center of the stern. And as you take that mental step backwards, I want you to let go of all thoughts. You can close your eyes. You can have them partially open or wide open if you like. Hi, Melissa. Just relax. Ride on the rhythm of your own breathing. Let the mind gradually become quiet. Let the muscles throughout your body, especially your face, neck and shoulders, cross your chest, middle of your back, across the front of the body, down into your hands and fingers, throughout your torso, into your pelvis, into your thighs, your wrists, shoulders, elbows, hip, knee, calves and ankles, down to your toes. Take a moment now to be aware of how you're feeling. And at this very moment, going to experience your personal alignment to your higher self through the moment called silence, starting now.
allow yourself to embrace beauty, the truth, the wellness, the youth. your levels of understanding, knowing, levels of not knowing. Relax into this rhythm of breathing. Letting your body be absolutely still. Allowing your entire body to breathe. You don't have to strive for oneness. You already are oneness. You are your higher self, your divine I am present self, living through you right now. Nothing to think, nothing to contemplate about. Just giving in to the rhythm of breathing. Accepting breath. Accepting the awareness of breathing. fullness of the breath in the body and feeling and being aware that your higher self, which is a spiritual conscious self, dwells in you. It has the consciousness to see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. Allow yourself to remain calm and centered. The more you do this, you won't slouch anymore in your chair. Your head won't fall forward or to the side. You'll just sit up straighter for yourself. Your pelvis will sink into your chair. Feet will be comfortable. Your hands will be comfortable. You will breathe fully. The entire body. Because you're aligning to your true self, your higher self, your divine I am presence in you. As I begin to sign off today, I hope that this was something that uh, brought you some gifts in being more aware in the remembrance of meditation and its importance. Meditate quite often, as many times a day as you can, or a week. Just meditate. Enjoy the beauty and the harmony and the peace that exists inside of you, the happiness. When you're in that state of meditation, you'll do what Paramhansa Yogananda has said. 
you'll reach the state of self-realization. So tomorrow at 12 noon, come again and listen to Swanda. That's Michelle Vidal at 12 noon tomorrow, right here at Resident Essentials, the group every Friday, 12 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Come by Monday at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time and listen to the whispering truths and moments about the beauty and importance of those who are in the field of being mediums with our wonderful sister from the UK, Audrey Wilson. Come by on Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Audrey's on at 9 a.m. Mountain Standard Time on Mondays. Tuesdays, 12 p.m., Donna of Dominion Tarot will be here giving one card readings and explaining the energy of the day, the topic of the day that she has. And then next Thursday, I'm back. Thank you so much for your time. May you have a pleasant week, pleasant day. May you have a glorious time discovering yourself and who you truly are. Until next time, remember that divine grace is a blessing as we are alive and well in the age of remembrance. This is Wisdom Keys with myself, Brother Francis. My grace is your grace. Be well now.